three men. It is just
Welcome everybody to the stream of the Paideia Pythons versus Soul C. Johnson, Adam Smashers, and Smash Bros. Ultimate. The stream will start shortly. Welcome everybody to the live stream of the Paideia Pythons versus Soul C. Johnson, Atom Smashers in Smash Bros. Ultimate. The live action will start shortly. Welcome everybody to week six in GHSA Smash Bros action. This is Coach Lou with the A L E X A N D E R E R meant to be. Alex, my co-host, bringing you Paideia Pythons versus Soul C Johnson Adam Smashers White action. Alex, how you feeling today? Pretty good. Yeah. I really need to get a, a, to have an intro for you because this just feels unfair. It kind of does, doesn't it? Um, but at least you are working kind of hard. All right, folks. Well, uh, the arena has been created, and we're getting ready to go through the uh, go through the motion of picking um, characters and teams. This first match is going to pit Omer for Paideia Pythons versus Isaac of the Atom Smashers. Uh, the first pick is secret so i'm gonna go off air for a second uh while omer makes his pick alex why don't you run us through some useless facts about this game useless facts oh <laughs> i can give you a few um hmm, let's think uh luigi hurts his hand if he uses falling fair so oh my God. <laughs> during luigi's oh my fair animation God. uh right. if, if he hits the head oh am i am i 
Yeah, I think you lost your privileges there. All right, our first match will uh, will pit Lucas versus Isabel. Omer choosing Lucas, and Isaac for the Atom Smashers choosing Isabel. Uh, the next part of this is selecting stages. Since the Atom Smashers are the home team, they will get the chance to pick the to strike the initial stage from a list of five. Those being Battlefield, Small Battlefield, Pokemon Stadium Two. Final Destination, and Smashville. And they strike Small Battlefield. Omer now gets to strike two fields of battle from that list. Uh, Battlefield, Final Destination, Pokemon Stadium 2, or Smashville. Omer strikes Final Destination and Battlefield, letting Isaac from the Atom Smashers choose between Smashville and Pokemon Stadium 2. This battle is going to happen on Smashville. Alex, what do you think for Omer as Lucas on Smashville? Honestly, I don't, I don't think it really matters where Omer plays. He just, he just wins. <laughs> Whoa. Hot fire. All right, well. Just don't. The teams are now entering the arena, getting ready for battle. One of the things these Pythons love doing is spamming that in-game chat with the full force of their neutral attack. So for the folks joining us for the first time, uh, the way this is gonna work is as follows. This is judged as a three versus three. Each team has three players. One player from each team will square off in a best of three game set. The winner of that set gets one team series point. First team to two series points takes the overall win. Now, let's get this match started. All right. Omer trying to establish some spacing with the PK fire and using Lucas's long grab there. Okay. Once again, Omer showing up that PK freeze. Will he get another incredibly cool PK freeze clip in this game? All right. Isabel putting the pressure on Lucas. With her hilarious jabs. Isabel just Lucas overall Lucas landing a PK fire and driving the opponent back a bit. Looks like we're having some lag spikes here. Yeah, which is pretty Whoa. unfortunate. This game is uh, starting off fairly choppy. Definitely messing with Omer's exquisite timing on those PK attacks. One of Is Isabel's interesting moves that you might have seen there, her down B, she plants a rocket in the ground and if you walk over it or near it, it will trigger and launch you into the air. It can be used for a few things like combos, so let's see if this Isabel can use that effectively. We just grabbed Isabel throw off the stage. Oh, but barely missed Ooh, the Does not miss with that <laughs> side <laughs> smash. Oh, wow. So unlike other fighting games, uh, this game is not based purely on damage or a life meter. It's based on getting knocked into a blast zone that encircles the stage. The higher your damage totaled in those percents you see at the bottom of the screen, the higher the knockback or the further a character will get pushed. Although I'm pretty sure Omer catching that forward smash would have thrown seven Isabels through ten stages. Ooh. Oh, nails it from behind. Wow. That PK freeze really is just such an incredibly good move, especially when using the right hand. Certainly not mine. I only know how to throw the PK thunder, and that's because it lets me control it. All right, landing a little forward air. Ooh. Setting up the freeze. Isabel gets close and manages to punish a bit. Lots and lots of lag from the small hiccups in this game. Yeah, kind of a bummer to see that happen, but Omer is hanging tough despite that. Isabel landing the down B and then catching a juggle. But Omer able to put a pretty high percentage on Isabel's second stock before losing his first. Already at 75, honestly, that might just be kill percent. Trying to land the forward smash baseball bat attack to send that little doggy flying. Fun fact, it's actually a stick. Dude, that's definitely a baseball bat. <laughs> it's a stick. Are you serious? It's a stick. Well, it's a, I mean, aren't all baseball bats sticks? Oh, wow. You're going to get into that, Mr. Phenomenologist? 
<laughs> you said that word correctly on stream. Here's an award. Right. Oh, and that shield is broken. Goodbye. Oh. Wow. Oh, I can feel that through the screen. Jeez. Man. So, uh, yeah, I guess another interesting thing about this game, in order to encourage action, uh, players get a limited shield. So every time you shield, your shield wears down for a period of time. And if you shield too much or shield several attacks that are too strong, your shield gets broken and you get stunned for a very long time. And, and Omer the takes ball. the first game Whoa. in dramatic fashion. They all right. say all, do all dogs go to heaven. I sure hope they do, because that Isabel is dead. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that commentary. <laughs> this kid, good folks. All right. Going into the second game as the winner of the first, Omer has to choose first, giving the Atom Smashers an opportunity to counterpick. Omer, who are you going with the second game? Lucas. Oof, we're going Lucas again. Alex, I'd ask you for who some good counters to Lucas are, but I don't want the other team to hear just yet in case they're watching our stream. Glad you didn't ask, because I, frankly, have no idea. <laughs> no idea because you can't counter Omer's Lucas. Said, um. All right. Omer keeping his fingers warm. <laughs> Let's take a look at, uh, at our setup here. Let's go to the crowd cam for a second so we can see. We have, a, we have All right. the first fan in the back row. <laughs> we have a live fan there on the right, but you see Omer, our second competitor, Adrian, and in the back, uh, team member, Lewis. Ah, all right. I think we have an explanation for the lag. Our opponents are on Wi-Fi, so we are going to try to press through uh, and see how that goes. I th we'll figure something out. All right, Omer, you are going Lucas into Inkling. Inkling, interesting. Inkling from this from the Splatoon game series, a game that we just streamed yesterday, and let me just say it was a very very interesting game to watch. We won, by the way. Checking with the other team now to see if they can fix their internet situation. We'll go to the scoreboard so you don't have to awkwardly stare at Omer and Adrian figuring out rules on their phone. Oh, All right. Oh, um, Omer, you get to strike first from a big list of stages. <laughs> Battlefield, Final Destination, Kalos, Pokemon Stadium 2, Small Battlefield, Smashville, Town and City, or the never-picked Yoshi Story. Poor Yoshi Story. Although it kind of deserves it. Which one do you want to strike? Uh, Final Destinations and Yoshi's. Striking Final Destinations and the never picked Yoshi's story. Inkling, an interesting character. You might see in the match a few times. Um, this Inkling has to actually recharge their ink, similar to in the base game, Splatoon. Um, I th if I'm correct, it's Shield and Beat. So let's see. Let's look out for that in this match. All right, Omer, we are going to do battle on Pokemon Stadium 2. So Lucas versus Inkling on Pokemon Stadium 2. In case they haven't yet, hear the roar of our full force neutral attack. Okay, let's see how this match starts. This is an interesting one. Inkling's a weird character. Kind of like Rushdown, kind of rangy, kind of neither, kind of both. Which 
considering that you describe the Inkling as that, it's interesting because they also have a weird lack of kill power sometimes. And you can really see that only certain moves can kill. And if you learn to read and predict those moves, you're in a pretty good situation. Ooh, good recovery by Omer there. Sometimes getting low with Lucas is kind of tough because you can't really spot the PK Thunder recovery. This Inkling very aggressive. Lucas fending it off with a combination of ice and fire. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of an appropriate Game of Thrones choice here, but I, I think I got to know my audience and figure that that would go over most people's heads. It would. Wow. A little too late now, I guess. All right, good forward throw there. There we see the Inkling charging there, so that those attacks can do a bit Ooh. more damage, but... The turnaround PK fire there caught Inkling off guard as they were rushing in. Ooh, and that PK fire was very close range. Almost catches the landing there. Just throws the Inkling off stage and gets and the kill. Yeah. This, Inkling, this Inkling's aggressive playstyle is working out very well. Oh. Although Omer is at oh, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> All right, Inkling makes up some ground there, manages to keep. Oh, almost misses the recovery off of the PK freeze. First time throw, Omer defends, and, and uh, looks like Inkling had uh, some technical difficulties there. And Inkling uh, oh. SDs. Well, it appears we might have. Uh, no, a they might have, they might have type of forfeit there, possibly based on that uh, on that failed recovery for the second yeah. stock. We'll see. We'll check on. You we'll check with the other team. Yeah, you can. You don't have to win the first stock. You have yeah. to win the first stock to attack. All right. Um, okay. This one. Take us through some commentary while we figure this one out. Sure do. Yeah. Oh. I was if he was like, Wait, I, I can't do it without Let's. We got our, we have our crew figuring out what's actually happening with this. Um. Uh, nope, I thought that might have been the other coach, but it is not. Something you might have seen there at the end of the match when there was some questionable things happening at the end when that Inkling SD'd. They fell into the blast zone rather fast, faster than normally, using a technique called a fast fall that allows you to return to the ground much quicker than you normally would. In, in the competitive professional scene, it's normally used to be able to continue a combo after using an aerial. Uh, no, they haven't responded. They haven't said anything, but they definitely can't be like, oh. They haven't said anything, but they probably, they probably just like, you know. Alright, well, um, as we try to uh, resolve this issue or move forward, um, we are going to begin character selection for the second match, which is going to be Adrian versus Tien. Once again, the first character selection of each match is secret. So I'm going to pass this back to Alex. Okay, Adrian, an interesting uh, competitor we've seen a few times. And his me gunner is very threatening. So let's see if the enemy team can stand up to it. Uh, it looks like um, they're going with, uh, looks like they're going to play the second. Looks like we have the official reading. The first the first game wasn't a technical forfeit. He just in the middle of the match decided to just like, like he, one time he missed his recovery and then he was like, okay, I'm not playing. And so he just killed himself on the third stop as well. Um. All right. Um. 
So we have word from the other teams. It looks like the second stock was due to lag messing them up, and they just said lag was messing me up real bad. Um, it looks like that well, player would rather lose the match than deal with a little bit of lag. An interesting decision, but we won't question it. I think we're going to move forward uh, with match two, me Gunner versus Shulk. Interesting tidbit about me Gunner because of the uh, because of the <laughs> core function of custom of customization, you must indicate your me Gunner's move set at the beginning of the match. So Adrian's me Gunner specifically is one three three two, which means that you're going to be seeing charge shots, missiles rockets and bombs in this game all right they have struck battlefield out of the initial list of five for stage selection oh i need to fix the scoreboard because i think all right adrian strikes you said smashville and final destination all right, leaving Pokemon Stadium 2 and Small Battlefield. Striking Final Destination, a uh, pretty good choice considering that Shulk ha as a character has some moves that can have a good amount of rage for a sword character and can move very well across Final Destination, so try to avoid that. All right, it looks like for this first battle of the second pairing, uh, we're going to do battle on small battlefield. Wait, 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 wait. Well, I feel like it's a wait before wait. I'm sorry. Looks like we're about to start the match. Okay. Oh, more oh lag. Boy. This uh, this looks like it's gonna be uh, another kind of rough one. Out of the gate, Shulk immediately using his sh his speed monado art, increasing his air speed and decreasing his attack power, jump height, and um, Shulk. Interesting choice considering that Shulk is a tall character and is pretty easy to juggle. Wow. Okay. Well, um, seems like Shulk, thanks to his kit, uh, has a little less struggle with this lag. Doesn't have to get in as much. This is kind of uh, making for a pretty awkward first battle here. Me Gunner, as a ranged character with a lot of projectiles, relies heavily on timing, whereas Shulk sort of relies more on spacing and power. Ooh, there we see a dangerous vision. Shulk's counter move, where if he's hit in, in a certain stance, he will take no damage and counterattack. Shulk has some pretty impressive aerials, and we haven't seen much this match. But one thing we have seen is a few F All smashes. Right. And Forward smash lands for me Gunner, racking up some percents, evening the score a bit. Interesting fact, most of Shulk's smash attacks can hit multiple times because there's a base hit, and then when he activates the Monado's sword laser beam, there's a second hit. All right, Adrian manages to put 13% onto Shulk's second stock before he loses his first. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of wiggle in there. This is a pretty even game. The lag is just atrocious here. Shulk really doesn't want to approach me, Gunner, right now. Although I think he should be. You know, for a ranged character, you would think that Me Gunner was very approachable, but the, especially the way Adrian plays it, he sets a lot of traps with those bombs to cut off yeah. the approach, and then uses that forward smash really effectively to punish anybody who rushes in too fast. Here we see Good shield there, there's the trap to force the jump, and there's the forward smash catch again. 
himself back in his normal position with no Monado arts. Oh, and the little bomb, the bomb trap on the ledge pays off there. Ooh. Getting me gunner off stage, getting some stage control back, using that multi hit F smash to try to kill, but that fast forward? No. It just it just never fails to amaze. I think because of Adrian, that's my favorite move in the game. This is forward smash. It's just so cool. It's just so cool. Choke on his last stop. He's really gotta be careful. Good parry there. Using the shield and releasing it right when Shulk's attack lands buys you a little bit of extra oh. time. And there it, it is again. It's always... Ooh, Shulk almost sd with that backslash. Ooh, that's Didn't a pretty heavy knockback there. He... Oh, oh, and he catches the spike. That was strange. It looked like Need Gunner had gotten past the, the hitbox of the sword, but... Looks like, uh, looks like he pulled it off. Shulk already at 112% very very high and <laughs> me gun is really just any move at this point to kill but shulk shulk really needs this the percent. lag is definitely not helping though Ooh, lands the charge a, blast barely lands not a killing. heavily charged shot there oh this is dangerous shulk is activating his smash monado art which increases his launch power but and he catches no no, oh. no. In an, in an incredibly Whoa, impressive Mee ending, the gunner right. takes the game barely. Hold on, we're gonna try to figure out replay on this one. Oh, please! That was Hold so. On. All right, I think I think we might be able to go to a replay here. If we can get a replay on that, that would be amazing. Let's, let's see. Oh no! 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 In an incredibly impressive ending. That was weird. I mean, they both hit, and they both. That was weird. You probably also would have died. It was close. Wow. That was a very explosive ending. But ultimately, Adrian takes the kill. Yes. All right, let's switch back over to the scoreboard for a sec. So as you can see, Paideia has a series lead of one nothing, and they took a one to zero lead in match two. Oh. I'm still a bit on. I'm still at the edge of my seat after that end. I can't wait to watch the replay on YouTube when we're done with this stream. You probably can't wait to watch it either, and when you do, smash that like, smash that like button and hit subscribe. It'll really help the channel. <laughs> All right, Adrian, as the winner, you need to choose your next character. We're doing a little bit of, uh, of coaching here. All right, looks like Adrian is once again going to go with me, Gunner, 1332. Okay. We see a good example of Adrian's trapping playstyle, and we see really those bombs, even though the explosion is small, they can do a lot when you get to the higher percents. It's be Gunner versus Shulk again. Trying again with Shulk, because really, I would too, after that, e after that end, anything's possible. Adrian gets to strike two stages from the full width. Final Destination and and he chooses Final Destination and the Never Pick Yoshi story. Do you think that we'll ever get to see a Yoshi story in this season? I hope not. Well, I gotta be honest, I don't really know anything about it. I just dislike it now because so many of our players do. All right, looks like we're doing small battlefield again. All right, looks like this is gonna be a rematch of the first game. Me Gunner 1332 into Shulk on Small Battlefield. Adrian making sure that the edges, <laughs> <laughs> that, the, that Shulk knows that the edges do not scare him. Really wants everyone to know that he is not afraid of edges, in case you were wondering. the match starting will we see Shulk go with an aggressive play style to try to make up for what 
he just cannot get against Adrian's knee gunner. Or will he go defensive after seeing how good Adrian's knee gunner is? Interesting. Uh, interesting start here. Trading blows back and forth a bit. Still increasing his speed, maybe trying to get a rush down on me, Gunner. Now he's increasing his knockback with his smash Munato. Ooh, misses the spike there, catches the up B recovery. Adrian using a long distance, high altitude bomb there to give himself some wiggle room. Uh, Shulk catches the smash, or the spike, oh, and Adrian misses recover. the recovery. Oh, Good. look, 50%. Uh, no, no, it's on uh, the... Okay, um, solid first stock there for TN of the Atom Smashers. Adrian looking to play some catch up here. Um, looks like a missed recovery there. Or? Oh, oh, Adrian recovers from a shield break. Very, very, very nice. Not only is he not afraid of edges, he never gives up spamming those buttons. Adrian embodying the protagonist energy. Alright, thanks to the lag, Shulk got two and a half minutes worth of notice that that missile was coming his way. These players are right in each other's faces on equal stocks. This is dangerous. Ooh, barely misses the spike there again. Lands the second missile. And the third, away. catches the up smash, smash and the up air, racking up some percents here. Shulk saving his stock by activating his shield Monado art. Oh, we've got smash active now, increasing his knockback. Oh, well timed. Well timed, using the up B there, switching the speed. Now he's switching to his jump. Oh, jump, excuse me. Now that he's looking for his jump, we might see some more aerials out of the Shulk. Ooh, Adrian perfectly catching the recovery there with the bomb and the up there, up air. Things are even. Both characters down to their final stock at 0%. This is a very oh, close match. The front smash goes the opposite way, and Shulk capitalizes with a forward smash of his own. Ooh, Shulk hitting another nasty counter, using Ariel to get Adrian off stage. Adrian rushing down Shulk with the active smash art. And Shulk catches the spike and takes the second game. Excellent comeback there for the Atom Smashers in game two. As much as I hate to see Adrian lose, that was an incredible game. For this next battle, the Atom Smashers will have to choose first. Will the other team be sticking with this Shulk considering that they did win the last game and will Adrian come back? We all believe in him. Hopefully next game. We see some extra strategy going on here in this room. One of the things we love about this team is how much they help each other. Confirmed they have chosen Shulk again. Yeah. Me gunner? This will be the final duel between Shulk and Me Gunner. Alright, getting ready for for stage strike. The Atom Smashers get to choose first and strike two out of the full list. Alright, they 
Eight Strike Battlefield and Yoshi's Story. <laughs> and Adrian chooses Pokemon Stadium 2. All right, Pokemon Stadium 2, giving uh, Adrian's knee gunner a little bit more space to operate. Yep. And some, uh, I guess, slightly wider space platforms, right? Yeah. Adrian making sure that he knows, that this shelf knows he's plans to end this game here and now. Half this game is completely <laughs> mental. <laughs> Here we go. It's the beginning of the Adrian match that will starts decide. Starts by setting a trap. Shulk activating his speed Monado art. Adrian is not phased, letting loose with those bombs. Oh. Shulk's forward air lands him right on that bomb trap, setting him up perfectly for the forward snap. Whip on a couple of airs, gets a shield, Adrian catches it with a down throw. Adrian gets back on the stage. Launches the high projectiles. bomb, perfect catch with the guidable missile. Adrian, really put Adrian the came on the to play here. This slightly wider stadium giving him some more room to work with with all those projectiles and bombs. Again, that, that forward smash, smash and that spike. Almost as strong as Adrian. Emphasis on almost. It's a great poking tool because it has such long range and it comes out twice. So, oh, dash attack sends Shulk far back. He uses his air dodge to avoid the bomb trap. Shield getting a little low there for Shulk. Adrian escapes his throw after a couple of bumps. Ooh, barely misses the forward smash after Shulk whiffs on his down smash attack. Ooh, Shulk going for the kill there with that spike. Adrian missed, Adrian uh, avoiding it. Adrian and up almost stage. getting a kill there. And Ooh, uh, the himself. second bomb confirmed. Okay. <laughs> the smash Monado art pays off again. Smash him zero zero. Adrian interestingly using the upbeat on stage to get, just get away from the show. Both players afraid of each other's shielding at the same the time. Dash attack. They have perfect ledge trap there on the platform. Awesome use of the back air to cover the landing. And honestly, the way these players are moving, this looks less of a smash game Ooh, the and more of a dance. Sends Shulk flying, he has to resort to the shield art to lessen the damage and try to keep the second stock from oh. running away. Weird, laggy, front smashy reflector thing happening there. That's a bummer. Ooh! Ooh. Okay, Adrian shields through the dash and catches Shulk missed attack. Another up smash gets Shulk off on stage. Oh. He counters the bomb, runs into the shield, gets his shield with a bomb. Adrian parries the front smash. Oh! He hits a charge front smash there. Adrian lucky to recover from that one. Catches Shulk on the way up. Oh, and he misses the recovery, letting himself get a little low. Adrian takes the second stock at uh, 90%. Shulk now on his last stock. Oh. It's 0-0 zero, zero again, going into the final one. This is incredibly close. I'm on the edge of my seat just watching. All right. Shulk using that counter. Countering Ooh, again, but it. missing the damage. All right, the bomb escape works there. Adrian gets a little bit of percent on Shulk and clears some space. Adrian putting the pressure on Shulk with all these projectiles. He's not able to get in. Wow. Just a flood of missiles there. If it works, it works. Sometimes you use, sometimes you can use your projectiles to condition your opponent's responses and give you time to figure out how to answer. Shulk Adrian, over 100 percent, kill percent. Adrian's leg trap there, setting up the up air. 
Running into the forward smash, getting up to 75% himself, using his bomb to clear the way for his recovery. Adrian gets choked off the stage with that bomb. Air dodge. Speed art has been active. The smash art oh is active no. now. Now shield, he's really just changing him. We see Shulk very slow right now. Oh, oh no! Oh. oh, and he gets him with a forward smash to take the final stock and to take game oh. two. Well played. Incredibly well played. All right, we will see the thirds from each team compete now. For Paideia, we have Cole stepping up to the plate. And for... And for the Atom Smashers, we will see... Damien. First character selections are secret. <sighs> so an incre incredibly close game. Uh, that could have honestly gone to anyone. Cole is going to be... Oh. Nope, don't say it. Don't say it until both characters are confirmed. I'm glad you caught me on All that. All right. It looks like Damien is going with uh, his usual choice, one of the two Samuses. We're going with regular Samus here into Cole's choice of Ness. for the opponent to strike stages from the list of five. I can just tell from Cole's face that he's looking to get revenge. Cole has a lot of experience facing the Samuses, thanks to our team composition over here at, Pi at Paideia. We have a couple of folks, including one monster named Lewis who likes to name the Samuses. All right, looks like uh, Adam Smashers have chosen to strike Smashville. Cole, you get to strike two from Battlefield, Final Destination, Pokemon Stadium 2, and Small Battlefield. Cole chooses to strike both Battlefields. Actually, no, out of two of the three Battlefields. I always forget there's another one. Battlefield and Small Battlefield. All right, so it looks like we'll be battling either on Final Destination, a totally flat stage, or Pokemon Stadium 2 with platform. Uh, Pokemon Stadium 2, it is. Pokemon Stadium 2, interesting having that one, having platforms that Cole can use to really get away from the Samus is projectiles, which is Final Destination, a completely flat stage with nowhere to run except edges. All right, getting ready to enter the arena. This third match starts off at 0-0. Zero, zero. Cole has to be ready to adapt to the Samus' playstyle because they could either be more melee focusing using aerials and smash attacks, or they could rely on bombs and projectiles. You'll probably see some moves that you just saw Adrian using with Knee Gunner as Knee, Gu Knee Gunner's main projectiles come directly from Sam. Not the bomb, though. A different bomb here with less range. Charge shot. Getting Cole to jump into a forward smash. Cole responds by coming down off the ledge, trying to set up a forward smash. Looks like the Sam's going to be playing with a mix of both styles. Setting some traps with the bombs, but also counterattacking with aerials. This looks like it's going to be charge shot, forward air, or shield, depending on how Cole reacts. Getting a good juggle there, trying to chase with the forward air. Cole trying to set up a projectile of his own with the PK fire, blocking the roll. 
Ness Steady looking for any damage here. With the grab. Ooh. Ness using his downbeat to absorb. I didn't even see what it was from Samus. I believe that one was a charge shot, and that one we just saw there was the uh, missile. Okay. For a projectile based character, Samus gets a pretty stellar uh, response option with that extended grab. And there we see Samus taking the first stock with a fully charged charge shot. Laying loose another charge shot, trying to just get some damage out on Ness. Ness almost a full stock behind, really needs some damage. Misses the absorption there, goes onto the ledge, barely avoiding that up smash. There's that lag again, good roll. Samus doesn't look like he's trying to chase until that charge shot is in the air. Ness really needs to focus on using some of his closer range melee moves to get damage on Ness. I mean, Samus. Getting caught with a charge shot mid PK. I don't even know what that one is. It's not flash. a freeze, it's like a bomb. PK flash. Samus trying to use up airs and aerials to keep Ness in the air. That's getting his first damage off in a while. Oh, Samus there he goes. Catches him with that smash. Tries to get the flash. Samus is just using all these projectiles so well, keeping pressure on Ness without giving him many options. Dodges that one, blocks the dash attack. Using and his floatiness to his advantage. Ooh. This look. Ness on his last stock at 50%. He really just needs to get anything off on this Samus. Almost hits the PK flash. Samus getting Ness off stage with a grab and a throw. Ness trying, Ness trying to approach, but Sam is just not leaving many options. He uses his PK fire and forward aerial to get Samus to back off. Ooh! Ness using his, using his PK thunder act to actually hit Samus. Very impressive. But ultimately, the game is a three stock, and Hidea loses the first match. All right. All right. For this second match, we're going to wait for. Adam Smashers to choose first, likely going back with Samus or Dark Samus. That seems to be Damien's two mains. The air in here very dense and one of the one of the first times that Padea has actually had to go to a required third match. We're getting some advice and Cole Cole is very is some pensive thought. Trying to break down this Samus's playstyle. Looks 
but Cole's having to learn the hard way that the fight is only as chaotic as its participants. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, okay, there we go. Uh, so the choice is Samus, Cole, and Cole coming back in with Ness. Ness. First stage selection, uh, the opponent will strike two from the full list. The opponent, Adam Smasher, strike Final Destination and Smashville. Cole, your choice from the rest. Final Destination and Smashville. You get to choose Battlefield, Talos, Pokemon Stadium, Key, Small Battlefield, Town and City, and Yoshi Story. Is choosing Pokemon Stadium 2. Okay, there we go. Getting into the second match. Okay. My day is down by one, so. This is a big one, yeah. We believe in Cole. We know we can do it. Going to Pokemon Stadium 2. And it's starting off with that charge shot, forward, air, lag, grab combo. Oh, he's using the shield a bit too much. It's about to break, so he's got to be careful. Forward air gets some damage off on Samus. Ooh, nice shield and then up smash. And Samus has their has forward has the charge blast charged up, unleashes it and gets Cole off stage. Cole recovers using his PK Thunder, hanging on the ledge. Trying to get some stage control back, so he's not. Samus doing some light starting there. Causes the recovery issue and takes the first shot. Ness is fishing for a combo or a kill at this point. Although this Samus is using that long range grab to get Ness off stage and just use that those many projectiles to very well edge guard him. Ness using his floaty jumps to avoid Samus' ledge traps.
Okay, another one nope, holds it. And tries to set up the box. Ooh. Cole backs up from the forward air, but eventually loses stock to up throw. Samus using that once again long grab range to get Ness off stage, take some stage control. Juggling Ness in the air, we see some lag. Ness trying to approach and get some damage off on Samus. Tries to PK fire, but Samus rolls straight through it. avoids the charge shot not even with a shield but with a perfectly timed jump another lag spike here Ness beats Samus gets there off stage oh but eventually Samus takes it to the forward smash and Well, GG's to the Adam Smashers for that one. An excellent bout by Cole trying to face off against an excellent Samus. Bit of a bummer about the connectivity of that in a couple of the matches. And the Adam Smashers take that one two games to one. So I can update that. Well, folks, thank you for joining this one. Uh, we'll see you again next week with the final battle of the regular season. Hope you join us again. And thanks to the Adam Smashers and their coach for allowing us to stream these battles. Still don't have a sign-off screen. <laughs> Au revoir.